Coast meteorologist Bill Martin. I'm looking at water today. I do a weather forecast every morning for the state of California and the West Coast. Today we're looking at water because it matters in the state of California. It's a Mediterranean climate. It's dry summer, drought summer, no rain, and wet winter. And that's where we are now, wet winter. And when it's not a wet winter, we have drought summer and more drought winter, which is bad. In this state, which is a huge economy based on water, needs it. And when we don't get it, we got problems. Well, we had a nice little run of weather, nice little run of uh, snowfall, rainfall, and pretty much beneficial rainfall throughout the state. And so we're getting a break. This is the skiers today. It's skiing up at Lake Tahoe. Last week, they started releasing water from Lake Orville or earlier this, this last week, maybe about six days ago. And this is how the new spillway looks. And this just shows you how much water. That's one of the largest surface reservoirs in the state, the second largest, and very important surface reservoir. So is Mount Shasta, the two largest and most important. Letting water out. The water is coming up in this um, lake, Lake Orville, which it's hard to do at the top, right? Because you can see how wide it is. For the water's coming up two feet a day. Lake Shasta's coming up two feet a day as well. And in some cases since January, like Lake Shasta came up 16 feet just since January 1. So this is a benefit of all the rain falling in the watersheds of California, Northern California, Central, Southern California, Central California, and um, in the mountains was as, as, as snow. So rainfall accumulations, we're looking at how many feet of rain did we get? I'm looking really mainly in just those two watersheds, Lake Shasta and Lake Orville. Why? Because they're the surface reservoirs that matter. We got a couple places to get water from. We got our, our main place, which is the mountains, right? That's where we pull from the snow melt, right? So snowpack matters, we'll look at that. We look at surface reservoirs because of rainfall, that matters. That gives us a, a, a report card on the health of the Northern California winter watershed. And then we have aquifers, where groundwater, which is a giant reservoir of water that is like a savings account that you don't wanna draw from. Surface reservoirs you can draw from, the, the um, mount, mountains, the snowpack, that's like the checking account, you can draw from that. The aquifer is the savings account. Don't touch it if you can help it. So right now, we're looking at the health of these systems. Right now, the Northern California watershed up around Mount Shasta is at almost five feet or has had almost five feet of rain. And you can see why they built these reservoirs where they built them, right? You can see these red contours. There's down here, this is Lake Orville. This is how much rain has fallen this year since the water year began on October 1st. And you can see they're both contoured as bullseyes for some of the heaviest rainfall. So in terms of percents of average, that's pretty good. And in the mountains, we've seen, this is Mammoth Mountain today. It's snowing up there a little bit right now. They've seen up to five feet of snow, you know, maybe six feet of snow in Mammoth. So very, very aggressive snowfall. That equates to this percentage of rainfall average for this year. And so you're looking at as of, in this case, it's as of January 8th, which is pretty, we're getting along in the water year. I mean, we're gonna get January, February, very wet months, but we're really to be 191% of average in this zone, 184% of average for water this time of year thus far. And then down around the uh, Lake Orville area, the watershed of the um, Feather River, Feather River drainage, which drains into Lake Orville. These two surface reservoirs crushing it with 178 to 190% of rainfall average. So we're doing super well. We'll do a deeper dive into that as we get down the road here a little further on. I'll look, we'll look at the eight station and the six station indexes and we'll look at the reservoirs. This is Heavenly Valley. And again, ski industry, a huge part of the California economy. I know we're one, you know that we're one of the largest economies in the world and we run on water in this ski industry has, I'm it's surprising. I don't know exact numbers, but it's surprising how much money that ski industry does bring in from tourism to um, just the, the whole operation. 
So snow in the mountains, again, this is our checking account. So when you have five feet of snow locked up in ice, it can trickle down and it, it trickles all spring and all summer and that gets into the, the waterways. And then from there you start, if you, you can supplement with the surface reservoirs. But right now everybody's doing really well. The snowpack is, is, is doing very well as, as well, as you can see here, up to five feet of snow. Some of these numbers are anomalous, obviously, like that 183. But up around Lake Tahoe, 53, 55 inches. Sierraville, around 65 inches. You can get the idea. And let's check out Mammoth, see where they're, they're at in terms of snowfall. So some of the snowfall, Summit Meadow. Yeah, some of the some of the snowfalls down here, pretty aggressive. Um, and down towards Mammoth, you're at about almost 60 inches of snow. So really good, good, good news for the checking account. This is um, how many feet of snow you actually have on the ground. So that's, or uh, pardon me, that's, <laughs> that's how, this is how many feet of snow you have on the ground, or inches. And then this is how much water would come from that snow. So it's water equivalent of the snow. So very aggressive amounts of water, 15 inches. So extra water in the mountains. This is the drainage for the Mount Shasta, Lake Shasta, Lake um, Watershed. And so this is an area that has the potential, as you saw, I've seen, to get well over 100% of rainfall average, to get well over five, six feet of rain by this time of year. And we have seen that. This is the Lake Oroville watershed, a big, another bullseye. This is the topography of it. And you can see why it gets so much rain because it just faces west and or southwest, kind of west, southwest, and it slopes up and that whole area just drains out. So how that works out for the eight station index, this is an index that we talked about last time, but it, it's, it's the report card for Northern California watersheds. So Mount Shasta, Shasta Dam Mineral, it's just various points along these two watersheds, but they both, in, they, all these points right here include Mount Lake Shasta and Lake Oroville and others as well but these are the two big ones that we worry about as much so this is strictly speaking of water but you also realize that these um, indexes take into consideration snow melts everything going past the water gauges it's how how every few uh, soil moisture you know what snow water content and rainfall and so what you can see clearly here is here we're, here's where we are right now this blue line see it that's average, right? So everything in this, in below it is below average for this time of year. This line is 1982, which I remember well, that was a big El Nino year. So you see how much wetter than normal it is. So right now we're here, right now, the eight station index is saying we are on a track that is of that, of the 1982-83 El, huge El Nino year, second wettest year. We're on track for that. So that's a good sign right now. We got a long ways to go, but the nice thing is we're well above average and we've got a lot of wiggle room because we're gonna need it because the next week or two look pretty darn dry. That is the eight station index, the health of the Northern California watersheds, <clears throat> which is most important. This six station index is important. This is Southern California, but it's not as important because it doesn't, it's just not as much water, quite frankly. You don't, you don't have the surface reservoir size, you know, Shasta or are, are huge. So here we are here. And again, this is much more encouraging than last year. Here we are right now. Here is the average, right? The blue line, all that. You can see we're behind, this is 1982, the brown line here. And we're right on track for 19, or 2022, which ended up way up here. So you can see, here's, here's where we are now, 14.6 inches, here's where average is. We're running 151% of average for this six station index. For the eight station index, we're running 161% um, of average. So these numbers, very, very important, very, very encouraging, very, very helpful to the dam. So this is Lake Shasta. Um, this, this, uh, this is a stock picture. But Lake Shasta, like I said, coming up anywhere from one to two feet a day. Uh, I did some numbers. Here's where the current, we currently are for Lake Shasta. And it's showing 82% of total capacity. So what they're doing with that last 18 or so percent 
is leaving it for flood control. But you want it's a game they, they have to play, right? Because it's like you, you got to leave some water because if there is a big rain event, you've got to be able to, you know, absorb that water so you don't have to let it all go down into and cause flooding concerns. So um, the water year, or so Lake Shasta is 81%, rises about two feet a year. It's risen 16 feet since January 1st. That's good. That's good. We're doing good. And then this, of course, is Lake Orville. Um, we all remember the spillway incident. I actually watched them build this dam. I know. That's how old I am. And I remember my dad telling me about the spillway, especially the old one. The new one, this is the new one here. But the old spillway, because it was not set up correctly, he said, you know, if that ever, ha you, if that ever gets used, there's going to be problems. And it, there were problems. And, and they, thank God they fixed it. That was a very scary time. But Lake Oroville coming up one to two feet a day. Lake Oroville is at 76% of its capacity. And again, that's a flood control thing. So Lake Oroville is at this point here, it's at uh, 841 feet and 76% of average of where they, of, of capacity. And they've come up 17 feet, almost 18 feet since January 1. I mean, I picture that. Think about how rivers and, and, and reservoirs, every, they go like this typically. And so when you start getting that kind of movement, a foot up in here, uh, down here, it's easy. But up here it's hard and so it's just an it's just sort of a a way to wrap your head around how much water is moving into these reservoirs so what is the bottom line bottom line is awesome we're doing really really well snowfall's doing great rainfall's doing great this is lake tahoe today they've got like i said over five feet of snow the water equivalent is good the percents of average are good a little bit of um well there's a little bit of wind up there now but what I was going to say is that the, the checking account, the mountains are doing really well. And again, to be this far ahead of average right now is really good because had that last system not occurred, had we not had the last weather run the last week, two weeks, we'd be in a whole different, whole different deal, right? This conversation would be very different. The, it, it, it would be, you know, um, concerns for down the road. So we're... <laughs> We're very fortunate. California is all about water. It's all about earthquakes. It's all about fire. It's about a lot of other things too, nature and art and all that. But, but in terms of things that are, we know are gonna happen, we're gonna have droughts, we're gonna have fires, and <clears throat> we're gonna have earthquakes. And these are, this is one of the big things in our, in our domain that we have to pay attention to. So just wanted to touch base on, with you on the water. Um, I'm, pr I'm happy with where we are now. This next run looks dry, but we'll, probably see something in about a week and a half. I'll see you back here.